I mean, they've brought in some really quick attacks before. And again, as you mentioned, these stats, they don't really sh give the whole picture because we don't know what happened in the previous stages, in the qualifiers and then the single elimination stage to be here today. So honestly, I think on average, to like in, in the finals, pretty much everybody has been beating their own records and we'll see if rami can do the same even if he doesn't one minute 30 average is incredibly fast still now we have more dragons coming in from team k so i do think that they do like to bring in some dragons here too Ooh, the magic mirror look at all those queens three queens that the king has backing him up oh never mind two of them did the way lots of dragons from the bottom side of the base with that e dragon on the right now he did take quite a bit of time just kind of setting up some funnels you know 15 ish seconds could that be a big factor later who knows we got oh gosh is that three clone spells for yetis look at that yeah we got some hefty damage coming through from those yetis but i don't think they're getting the value that he wanted to see because that scatter shot is actually still standing We'll be doing some damage on uh, these dragons soon. Actually, he does freeze them, gets the queen down there at the same time. It will then redirect some of the dragons split off to help get some of those defenses down, reaching over to those heroes clearing out. World Champion came through from the 12 o'clock area, though, with her ability to help clear out these defenses, and he's beat his time. It is a very quick one. One minute, four seconds from Rami here. Jeez, I was quick to point out, it felt like he spent a solid 15 seconds setting up the funnels and stuff at the beginning, but I guess it was worth it because with those good funnels set up, the dragons just started here and went boom, 64 seconds yeah. straight through the base. I mean, that was fast. Yeah, he set himself up for success. Let's put it that way then. The time that he did invest into the setup did pay off perfectly and he's tied again with some of those quickest attacks that we've seen over this weekend i mean yeah the dragon portion of the attack was only like 50 seconds right or like 49 i mean that is wild how quickly they just powered through i was a little concerned with the yeti's choice in the blimp because it does pull the ice golems out of the clan castle that the dragons would not have otherwise done but it did not seem to matter at all. And it's fun to, to even point out, you know, if it wasn't ice golems in the defensive clan castle, I think that would have been an even faster attack. Yeah, it really was incredibly fast. It was very well played, even though even I pointed out, I don't think he got maybe the value that he wanted. I feel like maybe he wanted to see the scatter shot go down with those yetis because we could have maybe even had a completely different blimp to secure the same amount of value with less spells. So yes, as you mentioned, the question the the question was was the blimp worth it? It played out pretty nicely. Could he gotten even more value from those spells? Maybe, but one minute four seconds is an absolute perfect start for Team Queso. Sometimes I find it funny that, you know, it's our job to sit here and try to analyze and critique, you know, what little things he could have done better. But I mean, it was a three star and it was 64 seconds on a max level base. I, I don't know if, if many people can do much better than that. <laughs> what a phenomenal attack. Yeah, it really is. And th that goes to show that if he were to repeat the same attack, maybe he could get it even faster. Yep indeed definitely possible to get it under 60 seconds as we've seen a lot of other players accomplish as well but there's the benchmark for this match 64 seconds uh, good luck to marcos trying to beat that we know that they potentially can but we also know that they tend to like to go the safe route their their strategies typically land them in this 75 to 85 second range we'll see if they're if they're gonna or or Sorry, to uh, Death God here. We'll see um, if they're able to improve what they were able to do in the last war, if they're able to come out even faster and able to maintain that with some of their other players as well. Yeah, well, we'll see. It tends to be, I think, on paper. I think their first attack tends to be their, uh, their, their slowest one or the one that they've struggled with the most, but then they pick up the pace pretty quickly. However, they just proved us completely wrong in the previous match. They, st they started so incredibly strong. I think it was 118, and even if we get that in this uh, case, it's still a very, very good start to them because one, like 104 is, is hard to beat. We haven't seen any faster than that 
So the average from Team KSO is likely to go down a little bit. The question is just how far. Now, Drove is up next. Now we've got that uh, giant arrow that flew all the way across the base. Now, what did we grab? Looks like two air defenses in the middle, which, you know, air defenses can be quite scary against Root Riders, but uh, I think he was more going for the pathing, the, the damage as well on the left side and on the right side, setting some funnels. The healers from the Healer Puppet hitting a lot of traps there, and the Expo locked onto the Archer Queen. Ooh, oh, he catches her in the Eternal Tome at the last second. That was a clutch play right there. Yeah, it's really nice that she's actually managing to stay alive a little bit longer. And if she actually gets all these troops to tank for her, she'll be able to clear up around the outskirts of this base pretty nicely. Now, the overgrowth is active, locked in the town hall. And again, as you mentioned before, they're locking in the defenses towards the outside of the base in hopes to get some of these major defenses down. As you can see, the scatter shot is still up there. We also don't want to go directly through the Giga Poison. However, the town hall will return pretty quickly the freeze is coming through on the town hall to stop those beams because it can target quite a lot of these troops the queen as you can see still alive and especially utilizing this rage gem from the warden is going to mean that she can do some pretty hefty damage there on that town hall i do think the queen staying alive from that perfect eternal tome timing actually helped him quite a bit she was just doing non-stop dps that entire attack definitely helped with the speed i mean if his eternal tone was even like one or two seconds later instead of a 93 second attack this probably could have been you know a, a, a 103 or 113 second attack so good thing he was able to keep her alive it was still a little bit unfortunate that his left group died so early and and many defenses on the left side of that town hall stayed up till the very end that definitely slowed things down so we're already going to see a significant difference in time after the first round of attacks but it's so early. You really don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah, it definitely is still early. It still was a really, really good attack from them. And again, as I said, 104 is the record that we've seen over the past two days. So even trying to keep that as average time is almost impossible. We'll just see what that they can bring. How far, how much will the average attack duration change? But the main focus, of course, is that we are bringing in those triples. The triples are the first thing that we will uh, be looking at the stars. Uh, like, as you can see, in theory, Team Kezo have been bringing in more stars over Death God throughout the entire tournament. Yeah, fun to point that out, but both these teams so consistent that that tiny discrepancy might not matter too much in the end. Next up, we got Santiago going to be attacking for Team Queso, and this man has been absolutely perfect throughout the tournament. The One of the, or at least tied with the highest hit rate out of any player in this tournament, nine for nine. I think that's the most amount of matches a team could have played leading up to this stage. So nice job from him. Uh, minute 29 average may not be the fastest on his team, but we'll see what he's able to bring here right now, if he can improve on that. But he's also got some time to work with because the first attacker on his team with that 64 second three star gave him so much leeway. Yeah, for sure. He's, there's a lot of room for error for the, for Team Queso at the moment. So even a slower attack was still uh, a little bit slower. Might still keep them in the lead here. Now we had the walls open on the left. I was scared the king might go uh, on the other way, but he does go back. Goes in for the scatter shot compartment. There are a few hidden testers popping up and some scouts in the traps. So he uses that ability, chains all the way off onto that left hand side. Royal Champion is coming through from that right hand side as well, which means that we can get both of these scatter shots down as these root riders power through the center. The overgrowth on the town hall, on the monolith, on the spell tower, and a bunch of those expos. Some good value negating all that damage right there. As the Root Riders make their way around both sides, he's able to, to attack both sides of the base here at the end at the same time, which is going to help with speed for sure. We still got four spells left over. The Archer Queen in the middle of the base targeting her favorite target, of course. As the overgrowth expires, we can rage, we can freeze. We can freeze again and again, or he can save those spells for Legends attacks later today because this base is <laughs> crushed. Unfortunately, not the fastest attack in the world, but still going to keep their average quite low. Yeah, one minute 13 um, time there. 
Six stars, though, is obviously the main focus. They want to get these triples down. They are but definitely putting some pressure on Death Gold Gaming. We need them to pick up the pace as well, maybe tighten up the difference between, uh, between the two teams on the average attack duration. Yeah, we don't know what to expect. I mean, Death God could switch things up. They could come in with a, a crazy attack that's going to, you know, land them a 60 second hit. It could happen, and that would be really fun and exciting to see. So I kind of hope they do. But they might prefer just to play things safe. We never know. So we'll have to wait, see what they come in with, you know, if they're going to have any sort of special uh, setup, special equipments. Uh, I kind of. I don't know if I want to see more fireballs right now. They seem to not be working very well today. But, you know, maybe some of those earthquake spiky ball combos, uh, maybe extra earthquakes to really completely demolish a core. There's, there's some things these guys could do to really speed things up. Yeah, I, I agree. The fireballs are so much fun to watch. I love it, but not just today, but... Over the past two days, it's been scary when we've been seeing a fireball come through because on average, it's not been successful. The risk is just so high when you use them, as you can see uh, the, in the previous one that we saw. All it needs is one little hidden Tesla that pops up to pull uh, that fireball to the side, and then your whole value just gets wasted on the outskirts of the base. And especially when you could maybe just bring in a few Earthquake spells and use that with the spiky ball and clear an entire core out. We saw that used yesterday. Um, and it works very, very well, and it's way safer. Indeed. The only thing it relies on is making sure that King does not have to use his ability early, which typically if you're just having King doing some some outside walking, it's, it's not the biggest thing in the world to make sure. Uh, fun to note on a lot of those attacks with the spiky ball for the core, the players tend to bring the Yak instead of the phoenix and at first i was wondering you know why why in the world are they doing that but i think it's just because sometimes the yak gets targeted instead of the king and the yak has so much hp that it's actually helping to ensure that the king ability does not go off early when you have the phoenix you basically have nothing to help tank for the king yeah as i said the pets and everything has just been changing ever so slightly people are learning they're testing new strategies and i love how they're combining things and grouping it all together and i think we jinxed it <laughs> we got a fireball coming in however less invisibility spells because we're not going too deep we just wanted to make sure that we can clear out the monolith and it reaches all the way and actually even gets the clan castle down this is one of those examples where a simple just first or second layer fireball is actually so valuable. I mean, he got the monolith. He got the clan castle, which is probably the biggest feat there. And so many other surrounding defenses. I think both multi-targeting archer towers. That's actually a really high value fireball. And you only need two invisibility spells to get it done. Impressive base identification here from Death God Gaming. And now look at everything he's setting up. The king queen taking the jump spell. The battle blimp on the other side. The royal champion at three o'clock. But I can't help but feel like this is taking a lot of time. Yeah, it also felt like these heroes, they weren't taking the jump when he wanted them to. The king and the queen struggled really to get into the center. They do finally make it and successfully take down the town hall. The queen is trying to stay alive with those healers supporting her. But Gabriel is sending in the rocket loons to go for all of those remaining defenses. The minions scattered all the way around the base to get all of these last few fluff buildings down and he gets the triple and the problem is with this one it did it, it was slower we're over the one minute 30 seconds but it was a phenomenal one to watch very similar time to their first attack but as you mentioned that was fun when you see a good fireball man you, you just can't help but get excited i mean even when it's a simple fireball like that no teslas to mess it up just going into that second layer boom it got so much value and just to see a huge chunk of the base go from perfectly intact to just completely disappeared it's just really exciting yeah we saw yesterday as well some people uh some players they tend to use even an overgrowth because 
the this using an overgrowth on one of the corners yes it does take more space to bring it but it gives you so much more breathing time to make sure that the setup is correct to allow for you to send the fireball in for where you want it to go exactly i love to see it we'll have to see what team queso are going to be bringing with their next few attacks because i have a feeling that they like the time advantage that they have 20 seconds on average is pretty significant not something you can really just ignore at this point but uh are they going to just continue to to pound through some of those quick meta attacks the root riders the dragons not do anything risky that's going to slow things down but even as i say that you know one weird thing could happen a, a queen dying early a royal champion going into a ricochet cannon certain things can slow down even those root rider attacks yeah, I, I agree. Honestly, it really is just the difference between a, a, also some traps. Maybe there's just a ba good base, you know, design where they know, okay, these are the meta attacks. Let me see if I can do some really cool things with these traps that I have and slow everything down. And this could even be the difference between it. We saw it on one of the corners of one of the bases where we had so many giant bombs pop up and it, it did so much damage. So it really just goes to show that not just the defenses are here at play the traps when they they even just take down the healers and slow down a, a small queen charge indeed we've seen a, a couple of these bases that had perfect traps set up i mean in this meta it, it's hard to to praise the base builders because we're just constantly having to look at the offense and see how how strong some of these attacks are but a lot of these bases have been set up i mean in the best way possible at least traps wise i remember some attacks earlier where the seeking air mines were taking out the healer puppet right away i remember another attack where the one compartment had like six giant bombs and it eliminated like half of the mass valk army right away but here we go marcello more root riders more valkyries a jump spell an overgrowth spell and of course the amazing captain hat in his camera feed I love his hat. It's like a statement of his, and I always love that he brings it when he's on camera. Now, again, we see the Eagle Artillery being on the outside, uh, which goes down very, very early. We've got the King and the Queen taking this jump. They'll go deeper into the base. King will actually have to use his ability pretty soon because he's took quite a bit of damage from the enemy Queen trying to defend here. Now, towards the center, we're taking a lot of damage from this scatter shot. We do finally take it down, but we're reaching over towards the south side because the overgrowth coming in on the town hall and nearby defenses will lock it all in place, pushing everything towards some of these hidden testers around the outside. A nice job power-wise so far. Super minions coming out of that siege barracks. The town hall still overgrowth, but it's going to expire here in just a couple seconds. He's got lots of spells lined up for when it does. Poison Tower is going to make things a little bit interesting. Going to go toward the Super Minions. So they might not get the value that he wanted, but that means that the Royal Champion, the Grand Warden, the Root Riders, don't have to worry about that poison slowing them down. We pop her ability. Spirit Fox still going invisible. She absolutely demolishes the Town Hall, the Tesla on the left. He crushes this base, but it is going to be their slowest attack so far, making their average attack duration go up just a, a little bit, giving Death God at least a tiny bit of room to start inching their way back. It's going to be hard to look at the time. It really is. But it also goes to show, I mean, if you look at the last attack that we saw in the previous match, the last one was very close. And it honestly, if we didn't have enough power, it might not even have tripled. So even if you have time, it really goes to show that at the very end, anything can still happen indeed anything can happen and that's one of the reasons why i and lots of other people still love watching these five versus five clash of clans matches i mean you never know even when one team looks like they're about to win the match and it comes down to the final attack something crazy can happen and that's just part of the beauty of this game yeah it is nice it, it goes like the, the main thing is just don't give up anything can happen you know all you need is a good good traps or you know the pressure might be too much for one of the players and even if the offensive side is very high at the moment and you we constantly see these triples coming in beautiful triples after triple all it needs is just a little bit of pressure especially being on the main stage with so much on the line for some of these teams it can get a little bit too much for them 
Indeed, and it's going to be really fun uh, just thinking about the World Championship later this year, getting to see all the teams compete, not just in an online setting again where they're comfortable in their homes, you know, or maybe on the bus as, as some of these players are, um, but they actually have to play on the stage with all the bright lights and the fans in front of them cheering and the loud noises. Oh, I can just imagine how fun it's going to be and how different it's going to be for a lot of these players. Some of them might not be accustomed to that sort of setting. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we'll just have to see how they're able to adapt to that. But we've got the next attack coming in from Death God. We've got Siege Barracks up top, a skeleton spell to distract some of those defenses. The giant arrow flies all the way up top to the 12 o'clock corner. I think that was for funding to allow for everything to go and do some damage in this uh, Eagle Artillery area. Yeah, it's hard to see exactly how he's utilizing what that giant arrow got because it felt like it only got like four or five buildings, if that, mostly trash buildings as well. We do have some clan castle troops coming out. Some of his root riders, I think he already lost one or two. A single and target inferno tower locking on, but now we're popping the warden ability, keeping the rest safe for a while. Lava Hound on defense went to the royal champion on the top side of the base. She got stuck fighting it while the ricochet cannon was targeting her. The ricochet cannon devastating against the heroes. Down was the champion early. Yeah, the ricochet cannon does do quite a lot of damage especially since it bounces it doesn't just hit one unit it hits multiple at a time now the monolith is doing quite a bit of damage here too and we slowly are losing so many of the troops the king is pretty much the the, the one thing still standing i think there's one root rider which is up which is actually able to open the walls here i don't know if it's going to be able to open the walls to the town hall though the king, one P.E.K.K.A., a couple of Valkyries, super minions will be able to get through the monolith. But this town hall, this town hall is everything. Three super minions down to one super minion. Down goes the super minion. We got a poison spell. We never used it for the lava pups. King has the phoenix. But he's going to go for the expo first. He's going to go for the expo first. The queen skipped the scatter shot on the right. And, oh, I mean, even just getting the town hall is scary. I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't think so either. He's on limited time. He's going to get stuck on these walls and they're not even low. <gasps> this is heartbreaking for Death God. The Town Hall's at full health. Town Hall versus a Phoenix. The 1v1 fight of the day. And I think the Town Hall wins that fight. Oh, this is devastating for Death God. Not only is it a fail, but it is a one star fail and that changes everything. Yeah, time, the time battle that we've been having so far is out of the window now. It is all about if Team Queso are able to stay ahead of the game. Now, they've been very consistent bringing in those stars. They have a two star lead now with only two attacks remaining each indeed and i think i i shouted this out before the match even started or early in the match you know the the way that we might expect to fail even on these safe root rider attacks is when a queen dies early or a royal champion into a ricochet cannon i think i said those exact two things and both those exact two things happened on this attack oh that's so unfortunate for the attacker there yeah, especially since Death God Gaming, they showed up. They really impressed us. They did so consistently well. They really outdid themselves in the previous match. And it's just unfortunate that there's one attack that is holding them back at the moment. And it's just so sad to see. But Team Queso, I hope they keep their head in the game. I hope they stay focused and keep bringing in those stars. We will see what they bring to the table. The important thing for them now is they do not need to focus about speed. They can slow things down. They can change the plan if they want to, although some players that might be, uh, you know, not ideal. If you have a plan, you're comfortable with it, maybe just stick with it. But you don't have to rush the cleanup. You don't have to rush the funneling at the beginning. There's certain little aspects of the meta or quick attack plan that you can slow down in order to make sure you don't mess tiny things up. 
Yeah, indeed. And we actually are transitioning to a Lalo attack with those lightning spells. Joel is bringing in some fun for this one. I only I don't know if we actually saw one. We may have seen one yesterday, but this is the first one that we are seeing today. I also see that there's a drill that is selected at the moment. This will be fun. Finally, we get to see some good old fashioned Lalo and Zap Lalo on this one. He gets rid of a Rage Tower. And what was the other building there? Was it an Inferno Tower? I think it might have been. And a couple of other smaller things. Now we've got the Ice Golem, the King, the Queen working in tandem on the left side of the base here with some classic equipments that we used to see very popular with Hero Dives the Giant Gauntlet, Rage Vial, and the King. I can't remember exactly what this queen has. We'll see in a little bit. Definitely not the giant arrow, or he would have used it early. A couple of good wall breaks gives him access to a bit of the middle section of the base. And what do you think is going to be following up next? Well, this is setting up the funnel pretty nicely. Now, I did notice there's actually still quite a lot of splash damage still standing. We still got both of the scatter shots. We've got that multi um, inferno on the right. Now, he's protecting his queen here. Oh, he does have the healer puppet. So she will be able to regain some health while she tries and deals with those clan castle troops that are emerging. We got one of those scatter shots uh, off of this base. Unfortunately, the second one up top is still standing, but this is getting a really nice path for the Lalo to start up top and work its way around. Now he's also got, he changed away from the drill. Makes a little bit more sense now to this army composition. Getting the blimp under that eternal tome, allowing it to sail safely towards the town hall and secure that star. It is a very common way to do Lalo at Town Hall 16. You see some of the, the Lalo pros around the world doing this, bringing that battle blimp for the Town Hall and just having the Lalo go around the core so you don't have to path into that Giga Poison, into that Giga Bomb. And it works out pretty well at Town Hall 16. The Royal Champion here on the bottom side of the base, able to get so much value. She was even playing a part in keeping that Archer Queen, that offensive Archer Queen alive Royal Champ has the Spirit Fox to go invisible yet again, and a slow and steady Zap Sui Lalo wins the race here for Joel. Able to get through this one over two minutes on the attack, but time doesn't matter. He took his time and he got it done. Everything in this attack looked pretty clean for the most part. That was nice to see a good old fashioned Lalo. Yeah, the setup was pretty nice. The hero dive portion was well taken care of. Got some of those major defenses down with those lightning spells too, which was very nice. I was a little bit uncertain about the drill in the beginning, but once he switched to the battle drill, uh, the battle drill, the, the battle blimp, it made a lot more sense to add that uh, safely towards that town hall. Indeed, yes. The battle blimp with the Yeti is definitely the safest option there, especially if you know you're going to be using it inside the Eternal Tome equipment from the Grand Warden almost always gets the Town Hall pretty safely as long as you time that Eternal Tome correctly. So now, I mean, if you're Death God, what can you do at this point? You got two attackers left. You're down by two stars, even if you do triple this fourth attack. I mean, there's not much they can do besides just triple and, and hope and cross their fingers. There's, there's really nothing else in their playbook. Yeah, it's very hard. It must be tough to see as well that Team K, so they're just rocking in those stars. The triple after triple is very, very promising for them to move through to the next round. And again, this is a lower bracket match, so we will be saying goodbye to one of these teams. And so far, it's not looking too good for Death Gaming, but we'll see if they're able to pick up the pace and keep those triples rocking in, though. I see we do have the giant arrow yet again for those fluff buildings around the outside, helping those dragons with the funnel he knew that he would be able to get them all down which is why he actually had one dragon split a little bit further away but the main portion is going directly in towards this eagle artillery tornado trap right around that eagle causing a little bit of trouble but no need to fear the warden ability is here healing tone will get them all back with the full health he invested a lot of spells on the archer queen to try to keep her alive on the bottom side of the base and she still managed to die the healers from the healer puppet are moving across the map but they're dead too and this actually could be really bad for death god gaming if they're not able to recover yeah i mean i, I just he's still got the three earthquake spells i don't think he's deployed the king just yet unless i i, I can't see him 
we got the Siege Barracks clearing up round from the uh, the one o'clock side. The Dragons, they'll go for this Inferno. The Town Hall is also still locked in place with nearby defenses. We're going for the Inferno in the center, but the Dragons will have to still deal with it, uh, deal with those defenses. But the Spiky Ball chains off very, very nicely here in the center, clears off a lot of HP from even the defenses that are still remaining. The Town Hall is secured. The Dragons are able to bypass the Giga Poison from the Town Hall. Always fun to see that spiky ball being utilized with the earthquake spells. It does quite a bit of damage there, but is it going to be enough? These dragons thinning out like crazy. Only one dragon left. As I say that, the owl goes down. The warden gets targeted. Can the dragon at least get that multi-targeting archer tower? Yes, before going down. A couple of super barbs on the back end, but it's all up to the king. The king, the phoenix, the low health P.E.K.K.A. And against four Teslas and a ricochet cannon. I don't know if he gets this. Maybe. It's, tough. It, it, it's close. Honestly, it is incredibly close. We've got the the headhunter coming in to try and help clear that out whilst the king is tanking some of these hidden testers. Remember, he does still have a revive available. You can see the phoenix bouncing, but he's taking so much damage here against all of this hidden Tesla. And once he goes to revive, he's no longer tanking for the headhunter here either. And his time is now limited. And I don't think he has enough power. It's only the phoenix left. And down goes that Phoenix. Another heartbreaker for Death God Gaming. This one just about s putting the nail in the coffin for their team. Because that's going to put them, I think, at nine stars after four attacks. Which means their best case scenario is going to be 12 stars. And Team Queso already sitting at 12 stars with still another attack to go for them. Yeah, this is looking very, very promising for Team K. So pretty much one star is going to secure them their spot in the next round. But we'll see what happens with those last few attackers. Now it does l open the windows here or open the doors, I guess, for these teams to maybe play something that, uh, you know, might bring some fun to the board also. Or maybe something that is a bit more comfortable for them going into the final round of attacks. Potentially. I, I kind of hope so. I'm still waiting for a queen charge attack. I want to see a good old-fashioned queen charge. You know, we did have a defense early in this match. Maybe one of these last two attackers had some time to plan out a queen charge. You never know. Or they can just stick with what works. The dragons, the root riders, they seem to be pretty consistent against just about any base design. And it, it seems that's exactly what he's bringing dragons. But <laughs> look at this. Not a single balloon. Not a single funnel troop. He literally just has dragons. <laughs> He's brought them all. I see a bunch of clones here too. Now we did get rid of one of those sweepers with uh, those lightning spells. Warden is in. And we've got the rage gem. So all of these uh, dragons are going to be doing some crazy damage that are utilizing that rage gem. The blimp secure the eternal clones protection as we go directly into what's the end of the clones coming in. And cloning up all of these troops coming out of the blimp. We didn't get everything down. We still have that one Inferno still standing. But we still cleared a huge value from the center of this base. Looked like he had some Yetis in that blimp. A rocket balloon. And he, the clones were hitting a little bit of everything. I saw a couple of clone Yetis. And definitely some clone rocket balloons. Interesting choices there. But 16 dragons splitting up in like three different ways now. We're deploying the king, the queen on the right side of the base. The royal champion on the left to fight the barbarian king and the spirit fox is dead early i don't think that's looking too great for that royal champion yeah the queen did go to ability here and she actually even has um <laughs> look we had the magic mirror the two queens going for two different walls one decided no oh, i'm gonna follow the queen on the right hand side now but yeah, as you mentioned, this is thinning out pretty quickly. With the dragons, we don't have that many still remaining. The one on the left will unfortunately go down, only leaving the two, that are three that are still up there, trying to go for some of those major defenses. Now the spiky ball does do quite a bit of damage, but with nothing really to help support these last few dragons or even these heroes, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna make it through these last few defenses. Yeah, some interesting choices on this attack. I think he might have just been having fun with it. I would like to guess this probably wasn't his original plan, switching to all dragons, just because he knows his team has this win in the bag. If he gets one star, I mean, he even brought the lassie onto a air 
Grand Warden, so <laughs> that might be the highlight of the attack that we didn't even mention earlier. Yeah, I didn't even notice the Lassie there. The Lassie doesn't get used a lot, I must say, so it is fun to see her getting a little bit of the spotlight here, but... Nicely done for Team K. So that two star is going to be enough. They will be sat here at 14 stars. The war is not over just yet, though. We do still have the final attack from Death God Gaming that we are going to watch. Unfortunately, they will not be able to make a comeback. And uh, But maybe they can end strong. Maybe they can bring some fun. Maybe give us a show. We'll just have to wait and see. Indeed. Maybe we get to see another fireball attack or... Or one of the troop types that we just haven't gotten to see so far yet today. Something I've been looking forward to is seeing some super witches. I started to see it making a comeback in the meta lately. Some other teams, maybe not any of the teams playing today, have been liking it a lot. Or I guess maybe just because they're going for speed right now and super witches aren't the, uh, the best troop for speed. But in a match like this where time doesn't matter, uh, you never know. Yeah. I mean, we had a Super Witch tech yesterday, but as you mentioned, it really only did come in play when these players didn't have to worry um, about the time. So it does make a big difference uh, to keep an eye out on those statistics before you choose what attack strategy that you are going to use if you have to keep an eye out on the time. Now, in regular matches, regular wars that we play in, or CWL, we don't have to worry about time. However, in these esports matches, when we do have a complete tie, this is why we've been mentioning time uh, so often. Yes, indeed. We'll see what they decide to bring. I really do hope it is something fun, though. Um, as their last attack of the tournament, they will be ending here in the fourth place position. And let's see exactly what they're bringing. The Dragons, the E-Dragon, another giant arrow combo, and the Healing Tone. Ooh, a Rocket Spear. I don't think we've seen that yet today. Oh, he's even raging up the Dragon there on the right-hand side just to speed up the funneling. And we had the Queen down south. She's got the walls already open. Grim opened them up with that wall breaker so she can continue into this compartment with a little bit of like a mini Queen charge. The Dragon's coming through with that Eternal Tome. Of course, the blimp in that as well, sailing all the way through towards the Town Hall. Overgrowth, very interesting way he's using it here. He did this on purpose. He missed the Town Hall on purpose, but it's not something we're seeing commonly being used behind the town hall. He does get the eagle blocked out of the way, which is helping a, a ton right now. The cloned Yeti bomb doing a lot of damage to everything in the core. That looks nice. The queen on the bottom side picking an interesting wall to beat through to go for that scatter shot. And the dragons on the right doing their thing. King, of course, on the left. And there's the rocket spear. It's actually pretty cool to see her use that rocket spear. Yeah, it is quite nice. And uh, we still got the eagle artillery up in the center, which is striking pretty hefty over there on that right-hand side. World Champion, she is making her way slowly towards it, though. The Fox is still protecting it for the time being, so that's why she keeps going invisible over and over again. Those traps trying to slow her down, those few skeletons that were popping up. The Dragons now making their way in towards the center of the base, getting this multi-inferno down before pathing again. This is crazy to see. Sometimes we see the Eagle Artillery go down first, and this time it might be one of the last buildings standing, but Grim does end strong here for Death Lord Gaming, getting the triple down, but unfortunately, it won't be enough. Team Queso will be the winner of this match, and they are advancing to the lower bracket finals. What a phenomenal play that they had. It's absolutely nicely, amazing. Nicely done from Team Queso. And not even needing a perfect war to advance here. You know, their base building looking a little solid as they move on into the final three, into the lower bracket final. And they've got a real shot at getting themselves into the grand finals where they might just be able to win themselves a silver ticket. Yeah. There's a lot on the line if you just tuned in. The last silver ticket is up for grabs and we are slowly approaching the end of this tournament. Sad to say that we are approaching the end, but look at the stats that we had. Overall, you could see triple after triple coming through there from Team K. So 14 stars to 12, quite 
the dominating lead over the Death God. They played so fantastically well, though I must say, Death God. I hope they keep their their heads high. They played very well. They were very enjoyable uh, to watch. Uh, we might be able to go take a quick look at the bracket. Yes, indeed.